baby. Hey, baby. What's up? Like I ain't seen you all day. <laughs> I mean, it was the time that I was asleep. <laughs> anyway, so. We want to welcome guys. Welcome you guys. Welcome you guys <laughs> to the All Is Fair and the Love and the Marriage War Podcast. Marriage. Love and War, because it's sometimes. Listen, I'm just playing. All Is Fair and Love and Marriage. Um, first, happy anniversary. Happy anniversary, babe. Six years. Six years. Yeah. Long. Years. Wow. <laughs> Years, okay. But before we start, we got a, a little proclamation that, you know, you should have come up with, right? <laughs> um, <yeah. laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll we come up with it for y'all right now. Okay. We're going to do it. So, right. because of the topics that we discussed, and you guys will hear and see as we go along that... We don't always agree on everything. A lot of times we don't agree. There's a lot of times we don't agree. And that's fair in marriage because we are two individuals. Mm -hmm. We have two different upbringings. We come from very two different backgrounds. Very much so. Um, His parents were married. Mine weren't. So in that sense, we have different views on everything. Mm -hmm. Um, So we want to proclaim and declare and promise we will never go to bed mad with each other. Yes. So once we push record, we are talking and we are sharing with you all. We're inviting you into our conversations. Mm-hmm. But we will respect each other's viewpoints, different or not. And it'll stay here. Mm-hmm. Once we push stop, we don't go right upstairs and we're going to be good. And great, that's that. Great parents, yep. great lovers. Yes. Yeah. In deep. In the word of my dad, down to the wow wow. <laughs> um, so all us very in love and marriage. How did we come up with this? So that's your story. <laughs> I wrote a book. I never published the book. I had the complete manuscript on my laptop, and when I was ready to send it to an editor, I said, you know, we need a little more meat for this. I feel like (laughs) we need a little more to kind of, you know, give us some substance. Some substance. We need to go through a little bit of stuff. (laughs) Some (laughs) years. I even said, you know, I think one of us might need to have an affair. What in the world? Listen, you gotta be careful. One thing y'all gonna learn about her, she's not She's crazy. It's the truth anyhow. I love you yet to say. Um, but she has these crazy ideas and sometimes she don't know how to just have an idea and not speak it out loud. And she doesn't really know the okay. Wow! Okay. You know, you know. He called me crazy. Yeah, you are crazy. Um, but that wasn't the point. The point was sometimes she speaks things that she really had no business speaking <laughs> and it, she doesn't understand or know the real power in her words oftentimes so she doesn't realize it until it happens so it's right. um and unfortunately but fortunately we kind of suffer the um, consequences of that in the so lack of better terms we got some more meat for the book it took a lot, but we got it. Um, we got it. But it's a testimony. It is a testimony. Now. Now. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, because of that, I definitely put the book on hold. But I know that Courtney and I have um, so much to share with you guys, with um, so many people. Not just for our marriage, but because of our different intellect our different um the things that god gives us and you know we i feel and i'm sure our court feels the same way that we want to reach the masses as they say <laughs> in the church 
Um, yeah, but we do. And I think that this is a way to invite you guys in. Um, and, let, and let me say this. We are very, or two very imperfect people. Um, we're not trying to put out there that we have the blueprint for how things should be at all. Because we don't. I promise you we don't. Um, we just are two individuals who have two different or similar opinions on some topics. Mm -hmm. um, and we just wanted to kind of invite you into how we kind of dissect a lot of these topics. Um, we have a lot of conversation spontaneously out of nowhere. And oh sometimes it can get very heated. Um, sometimes we find out how similar our thought processes are. He's a trumper. You're a liar. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You're I'm just liar. kidding. Almost made me say something. <laughs> No, just kidding but even things like that <laughs> things down to that like we talk politics we talk bible one thing i'm so grateful for with my husband is that he tugs on me um he tugs on my thought process especially when it comes down to the word of god because he is my bible wikipedia okay um and he allows me to me drinking some tea um, he tugs on me, you know, and I ask, you know, I, I like to grow. I always want to grow. I never want to stay in the same place. And because I can go to him and expect to get the Hebrew version and the Greek dialects and all of that, <laughs> he makes me better. So we talk politics, we talk the word, we talk church which is not always the same thing as talking the word. Say that. <laughs> um, we talk friendship. We talk parenting because we are a blended family and yeah. we sometimes have differences on that as well. Um, what else, babe? Um, literally everything. That There's everything. not too many things that we will stray away from in conversation. Um, if it's something that's kind of in the trending topics so of what's going on in the nation, we sometimes will tackle it just because I, I like to spark like different random conversation just out of nowhere. It's just kind of how I've always been. You like to see the crazy. Yeah, but I just like to see different people's perspectives. And it's not just what hurts with anybody. Um, but I tend to kind of pull on her. I just ask her a random question out of nowhere. She look at me crazy. But, you know, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> um, so... Back to six years. It's been a journey. It's been a, a long journey. And we have so much longer to go. I mean, like, a lifetime. And we plan on being here for some years because, you know, we gotta be. We gotta be here for some years. But it has been a trying journey. I would not, um, I would not want to go through with it with anyone else. Absolutely not, um, because I know that beyond the natural of being a great father and being an amazing husband, um, he pulls on me and he makes me want to grow. And I don't want to be with somebody who, I would never want to be with somebody who's okay with me staying the same, you know, who's okay with me being the same way I was when we first got married. Like, that's not, it's not okay. Your counterpart should always tug on you. Mm -hmm. If you're with somebody who's allowing you to stay stagnant and with the wrong person, um, then I thank you for that too. Because I'm nowhere near the same person that I was more than six years ago when we first um, got together. And, um, it's been a journey. I was, I've been a knucklehead a lot of those six years. <laughs> but I feel like I'm, I got it together. That was a cool thing. A lot of that to you. So thank you. I love you. I love you. <laughs> um, All right, that's enough of that. Um, so, where are we now? We have three amazing children. Yes. The Lord is very funny. We have a teenage daughter, mm -hmm. a three year old toddler boy, and a baby boy who is learning to try to walk. He's cruising and Oh my goodness. I mean, <laughs> the emotions in our home. and I decided to run away like three times a day. But he ain't going nowhere. 
there because if he goes somewhere, I'm going with him. <laughs> we going together. Um, and we're good. We're really good. And I'm grateful for where we are. Um, perfect? No. Not at all. But good. And I keep saying that. He keeps kicking me because he's like, all right, we good. I got it. Shh. <laughs> but um it's, it's definitely an experience but parenting this group of kids is it's a journey mm-hmm. um we got different aspects like you said we got a 13 year old daughter who's going through puberty and changes and it's something i've never experienced before she's experienced it of her own life but i, was I don't know nothing about the changes that uh that a uh, teenage girl goes through and sometimes, you know, I want to react because, you know, <laughs> hey, <laughs> listen. Um, and then we got our almost four-year-old little boy who, that's a, that's a, another little roller coaster there because he's, he's a ball of joy, but he can do anything sometimes, especially with his body training. And he likes gross stuff. Yeah, he does. He's, he's a boy. He's a boy. He's a boy. He's a boy. And, and, that's something I know about. Yes. And that's something I know about. And then we got Carter, who is our little boy, our baby boy. And he is the one that's, you know. I think he's going to be the fighter. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he's going to be the fighter. But, but, but they're giving us three different aspects of parenthood. We got puberty, potty training, and pampers. <laughs> <laughs> Three P's that we, we need to write a book on that, babe. Yeah. That's uh that's it's crazy. Yes. It's crazy, but it keeps us on our toes. Um, and they all give us a they, different love. Yeah, and and I'll say this they, they keep me young. I don't know about her. I go to school. She's she, she the old lady. <laughs> but that's another topic. Anyways, let's see what else is on here. Because we just wanted to give you guys for episode one, we just kind of wanted to invite you in, yeah. give a brief, brief intro, and kind of talk about what we were going to talk about. Like I said, we'll talk about um, politics, the word of God, church, church folk. Relationship. Relationship in church. Music. Like, just everything. Like, we talk about everything. And, like I said, the one great thing about um, All Is Fair and Love and Marriage is that it is fair to be yourself. Yeah. It's okay to be yourself. You don't have to, um, you don't have to fake the funk no. if you're married to the right person. Right. If you are married to the right person, you don't have to fake the mm-hmm. funk. Be you. Yeah. I know that this is somebody that I can be butt naked in her presence. Yeah. Not just naturally. I mean, that we listen. We don't we know, married. We've been married six years in. But aside from that, I can be as transparent and as vulnerable and naked with her as I need to be or as I feel I should be. Yes. Um, and she can do that the same with me. And there's no judgment. I'm not going to send her to hell or her try to divorce her because she had a different view than I do. I almost bought him a Casio though when he told me that I was going out with him. You know, there's, you know. There's a line somewhere. There's a line somewhere. Casio is it. (laughs) But I definitely would say that the vulnerability and the transparency um, didn't come immediately. You know, once we turned around and said, and um, the pastor that married us, Bishop Brinson, once he said, I introduced to you Mr. and Mrs. Courtney Newsom, it wasn't as we walked down the aisle, everything dropped on us that we had the great qualities of marriage because that is absolutely not true. Um, I still had up a facade in a way. I still had up my heart and shell because I'm from the hood, okay? I'm from the hood. I don't show my vulnerable side. I don't cry for nobody. Now, I cry all the time. That's a water bucket. All the time. But it took some time. So now I know that I can be who I am unapologetically with my husband. Um, And there are some things that we don't see eye to eye on, like politics. 
you know? Speaking of, you remember where we were the last election? Yeah. In Canada. Ready to move. Ready. No. <laughs> Man. <laughs> no, but, but we, we were over there. We were celebrating our anniversary. And, um, yeah, like, it was, it was a scary time at that point. And, and, and like, it was to the point where even the Canadians that were over there while we were celebrating, they're like, man. Are again. Right. Here we are again. And four years have gone by and it seems like stuff has gotten a bit scarier. Yeah. A lot crazier. A lot crazier. Um, not even just because of the man himself, but because of the endorsement mm-hmm. that the followers of this man feel they have to be able to operate the way that they do. Right. And it's it's a lot more scary because when we when he was voted into office, we didn't have two young black boys that we were raising. Now we do, and that changes the narrative of everything. We are raising two black kings, two black. Amazing. There he is. <laughs> um, two black, amazing young boys, and it changes things because now we have to parent differently. Now we have to have tougher conversations that we essentially didn't think that we would have to have. I knew we would have to have so early on. Right. Um, and granted, of course, hey. he don't understand a lot of it. He don't understand none of it really. He's as innocent as he can be right right now because he's four. But to think about the fact that there are times where I worry about whether I'm going to be able to come home to him, right? Because of the um, the temperature and the climate of the country at this point in time, Um, there's different conversations that I know I'm going to have to have with him about how to operate and how to handle yourself if you are ever put in a situation um, where you could be in harm's way from somebody who you shouldn't be. Absolutely. Um, the ones that are sworn to protect and serve and all those things. But Not even that, just humans. Mm-hmm. Like, we should not have to second guess if we're going to make it home when we come in contact with any other human being. Sure. But... There's hate in a lot of people's hearts. There's racism in a lot of people's hearts. And we have to essentially govern ourselves in a manner that we may not be able to do at home. You know, we're comfortable, we're free at home. We are, you know, free to be who we are. But sometimes people are, you know, afraid of who we are because they ain't us. (laughs) <laughs> or for whatever reason no, for but you know we have to have those conversations and now things are a lot different than you know where we were hopefully I voted did you vote babe? Nah, of course I'm I That's voted, I voted before I voted before you voted you did vote before I voted I was, sleep. I was not asleep I told you I was asleep you was not I was resting my eyes calling the I was resting my eyes. I was. I was resting my eyes. Anywho, um, so, you know, as the country sits and waits for these STD results, <laughs> as we wait for these results, um, you know, yes, there is some humor in it because you scroll on Facebook and you see Yo, things like, oh, Chuck E. Cheese would have counted faster than the, the, church, the church deacons would have had these ballots. The church counted. deacons would have been had these ballots <laughs> counted, okay? And we wait for that stuff. And yes, it is. It heightens our anticipation, but um, it helps us to kind of like have those conversations of where do we see things going and why do we see things going when they're going and things like that. I know um, 
all day we've had conversations about politics. And I am in no way, shape, form, or fashion a political individual. Nor am I. I, no, I'm not. I live my life. I, you know, unfortunately, sometimes I have a mindset of if it doesn't darken my doorstep, I don't want to talk about it. But we have to. We have to. Um, because that's just the way of life. You know, we don't know when we're going to come in contact with certain things. And we have to have those conversations, the proactive conversations, to kind of prepare ourselves for proactive. Isn't that what it is? You said proactive. I said proactive. <laughs> 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 proactive conversations um, to, you know, kind of like prepare ourselves for life and prepare ourselves for society and prepare ourselves for what we're, we can face because Trump could be our president. Four more years. Y'all watch skin, though. They put Vince in the office and he didn't even win. Listen, I really believe the country got a piece of 13 somewhere. Maybe not that it's called a piece of 13, but it might be that called B6. <laughs> it might be called A512. It's a little off, a little different, but it's in there. It's definitely in there because where are these people getting this, like, these ideas from? They don't just, uh, stuff does just, you know, fall into your mind. But, like, that, <laughs> that specific. A512. Uh -uh. A512. That is funny. They up there. Listen. And they, they. Listen, no, but. It's my puppet master. The government, the, the government is in. Unfortunately, it's in the pockets of those who have. Puppet master. The money. Um, and they're the ones that decide the changes that are made in the country. Brenda, yes, we all have power to exercise our voices and vote and do all those things that have been afforded to us. But. I do believe there is a limit to that Absolutely. level of power that we do have. Um, but I know that I serve a God who holds the government on his shoulders. Oh. I'm revving up. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I mean, that's where the importance comes in. We're the body of Christ, the church, and I'm not getting church here, but but we have to we have to do as the Bible says to and pray for those who have rule over us pray for those that are in position um, to make those decisions for us that they operate through how we will be it's crazy that you talk about praying for those that are in position mm -hmm. that post there was a post on Facebook when the church ah, go no. crucified yeah. what was her name Paula White Paula White yeah and I don't even know who Paula White is. I don't follow her. She I'm was, not. She was a. She was one of um, T. Jakes's. Um, like associate pastors. Daughters and, you know, oh. See, listen. Let me explain something. He, he pretty much disowned her. I said before. I'm from the streets. Okay. I don't really know all that church, like the church folk and all of that. I'm not really into that. I don't. I don't really. I'm not. I don't know all of that. Courtney does. I didn't know who Paula White was. And I seen this post on Facebook. Courtney seen it first and I seen it. And it was so many church people crucifying her because she was praying for Donald Trump. Now I get it. The pictures were probably um, press related and for um, what pictures are for to show off. Um, but you said a great point. We have to pray for those who have ruled over us. We have to pray for... And he is... But that's not to say. Here we go with, with this agreement. Uh, <laughs> wait a minute, let me finish before go you ahead. say that. Go ahead, go ahead. Not... Yes, this man is nuts. Okay? He's crazy. He's made some crazy statements and he says some crazy things. And I don't agree with a lot of his personal behaviors, you know? Um, the different accusations and the different things that have been proven, um, you know, in his personal life. But does that mean he's not granted prayer? He's not warranted prayer 
from the God that shows us grace? No, you're, good. you're very correct. And, and he does deserve the same grace that we would want uh, from God. But at the same time, at the same time. And granted, no, the, the, the church should not have gone they so went. far. <laughs> And, and pretty much dehumanizing this individual um, because of the fact that she is an avid Trump supporter. But saying that, mm-hmm. on the flip side of that, um, she's an avid Trump supporter. <laughs> <laughs> there are other and, Christians that are avid and, Trump supporters. And they just as crazy. But, <laughs> hey. I call it what? I, what? This is my. This is my truth that I live in, and you can disagree or not. But at the end of the day, I, especially being someone who upholds Christian faith and operates through love, as um, Christ called us to do, I couldn't see myself endorsing someone who is a post child for the complete opposite of. Operating in love. Exactly. I hear you. I definitely hear you. And that was one of the conversations that we had yesterday or today. Um, of one of the reasons why I voted the way I voted. I mean, well, the election is over. I voted for Biden. Okay. Um, I mean, well, they still call it real slow, but. <laughs> Come on, Nevada. I, I voted for Biden <laughs> because, not, not because, um, like, a lot of people vote for Trump that even you know they are christians and they're black um and people are like i can't believe you but i didn't vote for trump because because of the person that he is you know the person human being um you know the (laughs) the very womanizing uh comments that he's made the rape accusations because i was not there um the the racist comments that he's made just as an individual if you know even if he wasn't running for president if i was offered a position at his in his office i wouldn't want to work for him because of the person that he is but you know so that's why i don't you know i don't agree with having him run our country but a lot of people are looking at it in a strict political lens you know so that's and I get that it's it's both sides I get that and I don't agree with a lot of his politics granted he's he's done some stuff that has been beneficial to some individuals Um, (laughs) I mean I'm I'm just saying like he, he, he speaks about how he's done more for the African American population than any other president since Abraham Lincoln and he's been quoted saying that, which uh, uh, shaky. <laughs> no, seriously. Um, and yeah, I mean, because of this COVID nineteen situation, yeah, we got we got some money. Right. You know, I was appreciative. You know, I, I, yeah, give us a second check. Though. I enjoyed that stimuli. You didn't give us that <laughs> I, enjoyed, I enjoyed the stimulus check. I was waiting for the second check. But, um, what else has he done for the overall African American population? Yes, he's given a lot of money to HBCUs, and kudos to you for doing that. I didn't go to no HBCU. <laughs> did, did you? No, I did So I didn't reap the benefits of any of that. Granted, there has been some um, tax cuts that we've benefited from um, because of the, like the different um, child credits that yeah. we received on our taxes. And we got a lot of kids. And we, and we got, you know, th- that, that, was, that was a blessing. So, yeah, there have been those things. But there's a lot of things that his policies reflect that I don't agree with, like with, with police reform and such other things. He's, he's just when it comes to advocating for the African American population, not just giving us money to hush us up and uh, keep us quiet for a little while. When it comes to actually advocating for the African American population, it's non-existent. Yeah, and as a president, you have to be able to advocate for all races, mm-hmm. 
for all you know right types right. of people. Wrong is wrong. You know, and yeah. as a black woman, I can't go out and advocate for a white woman because I don't know what it's like to walk in her shoes. However, if there's a position that I'm holding that I have to advocate for all women, regardless of your background, I have to rise to the occasion. Rise to the occasion. And he has not really been able to do that. Um, you know, and even, you know, even some, you know, I ain't even gonna go there because yeah, this is the first episode. Say your truth, come on. But even sometimes, you know, um, we, as a people, mm-hmm. may not even be happy with how he may advocate for us. And I'm saying people because I'm not gonna go that so hard. True. But like, you know, because he has a people, what people? Human people. What kind of human? Children of God. No, I'm just joking. Um, but like sometimes I've I've seen that, for instance, um, like after a lot of the the protests and riots went on recently behind George Floyd. Mm-hmm. Um there were certain things like with Starbucks. Um, when they got the backlash on not allowing their employees to wear Black Lives Matter mm-hmm. clothing or, you know, um, they got this huge backlash on social media. And, the, and it was deserved. It was very deserved. But when they changed their policy and said, okay, come in, where you guys, where your Black Lives Matter stuff? Yeah. Then all of a sudden, yeah, I'm like, yeah, wait a minute. Was, was oh, backlash. now now y'all want to do it? It's too it late. Can't be right. What? It can't be right. Like, our goal I is to, like, we're so, our, our voice and a lot of things that we do it's is to make a change. Mm-hmm. And then when the I change comes, oh, it's too late to make that change. Like, excuse me? Yeah, we can't. No, we like, can't we win. can't. It's it, exactly. It's like, where, where, where's the win? Like, mm-hmm. when are we going to say, you know what? Granted, it didn't come when we wanted it, but it came. But it came. And I think that I don't know if I think in just life, it it'll be hard to be happy with anybody. It was it's Barack or Michelle. In office, <laughs> please, God knows. Um, but yeah, I think that's like I think that that causes a lot of issues too. I agree. as a people, especially with this Black Lives Matter movement, we're doing all this not just to be seen, but to, like you said, be a, um, a force for change. Right. And we kind of have to change our mindsets first um, to be more receptive to change when it happens. Right. Because um, if that's not the real reason behind all these protests and everything, why are we doing it? Exactly. So I, I agree with you 100% there. He agrees with me, guys. Now, <laughs> <laughs> speaking of the Black Lives Matter. You know what? We do that in relationships, too. You know, and I'm guilty of it. There's been times where I would be like, yo... If this don't stop doing this, mm-hmm. if he don't stop doing this, if he don't stop doing this, mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden he stops doing it, and I'm like, you only did it because I you asked. Only did it I wanted you to. I wanted uh-huh. You yeah. know, we gotta, we do Thank that. You. <gasps> Watch your mouth. Hey, they use the P I S S me off. <laughs> no, but seriously, like we do stuff like that, and we want a change but then when we get the change we're not happy with the change like how can we grow as people relationships marriages just humans all together parents you know like even as oh especially as parents when we want a change and we don't see the change when we want it and we finally get that change we're like nah you only did it because I I whooped your butt ten times I don't whoop but I whooped your butt ten times. <laughs> and, <laughs> you know, we have to learn to, like, receive the change and be receptive to it. Even if it may not happen when we want it to happen, but everybody grows at different paces. But does that mean that 
one should be rewarded for said change if it took so much. That's a good question. Um, I think recognition definitely um, is warranted and is appreciated and is it a um, reinforcement for positive yeah, behavior? Yeah, because um, if you like, oh, I changed, but you don't care, you don't recognize mm -hmm. it, then what I'm changing for? And, because I know you're about to say something, uh, 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 wait a minute. <laughs> the, first, the first reward, the first kudos comes from yourself because you recognize your own growth. You recognize your own step to better yourself, mm -hmm. to change your behavior, to make your situation better, mm -hmm. especially in marriage. Right. You know, if I know that there is something that I'm not doing in honor of my marriage, and, you know, for instance, and this is a hundred percent hypothetical. But if somebody keep reaching out to me and keep, you know, or a bunch of people, because I'm a daddy, and somebody, you know, keep just sliding in my DMs, and before I'm like, you know, it's just, it's just flirting, it's just entertainment, it's just, I'm not going nowhere with them, so I'm just entertaining it. And then one day I'm like, you know what, God deals with me, and I'm like, ah, I'm about to just start ignoring and blocking because my husband at home, and he loves me, he takes great care of me. I don't need to entertain. He he grabbed my booty when he walked past in the kitchen. So what I need to what do I need to entertain for? So that when I recognize my own personal growth of yo, I'm blocking, I am ignoring, I'm deleting, that reward internally is greater than anything that anybody can do. You know, anything that anybody can say. Because I'm realizing my own personal growth. I'm realizing my own strength, my own boost up to the next level. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I spoke about that the other day. Like, my, like recognizing my own growth. Right. Your own because, graduation. Yeah, That's my own said. graduation. Yeah, because <laughs> it took a long time, y'all. <laughs> a long time. A long time. But, um, yeah, like, she, she got the passwords in my phone. So she, if she ever wanted to go and see what I was doing, she got the freedom to do it. <laughs> but Lord have mercy. It took a long time to get there, but that's the growth that when, um that came over the course of time because there was one time I didn't want to go on my phone because I was like, I don't know. Did, did, I, did I entertain anybody this week? <laughs> did I read the messages? Did I? I don't know, because you know, I was reckless like that and I didn't place the value where it should have been placed uh, even though I wasn't going all the way and like fully cheating on my wife and stuff I was entertaining conversation with people I probably should have been and that's a good uh, segue okay. and I want you guys to comment I want you guys to like inbox email whatever I don't care get to us okay is that cheating do you think that entertaining the opposite sex or flirting or leaving the window or the door open, is that cheating? For a long time, I felt like it wasn't. For a long time, I did. Um, I thought it was, you know, just entertaining. Like, it's fun. And, and, and like I said, it was just, because the fact of the matter is, as a man, every man likes their ego to be stroked. Ladies, too. Um, and whether or not you're getting it at home, it still feels good to know that you're still desirable to right. other individuals. That's true. Um, because yeah, like like over the course of time, like especially with, like self love kind of goes yeah. down after a while, especially when you're getting older and. You gained a little bit of weight. We look at our wedding pictures and be like, dang. I was, I was skinty. Skinty. I was, I'm, I'm looking, okay. at it, looking at it right here, <laughs> staring at me in the face. Skinty. Yeah. Okay.
can it can wear and tear on your yeah. own. That's very true. Everything. <laughs> and so it feels good to feel desired by somebody. Now, that's not to say that it shouldn't be happening. Um, so realizing that. <laughs> no, no, seriously, but it's but it's not just because of that. It's because it does leave doors open. And mm-hmm. It allows things to come in that shouldn't be in. And to grow. After a while, those seeds plant and they you keep on watering them. They're gonna grow and they're gonna mm-hmm. root. Right. And it's hard to get rid of it. Mm-hmm. it like like there, there were plenty of times where I'm like, all right, I need to stop. It. I need to stop doing this and, and I stopped for a little while and I find myself falling back in it because there were roots there right. that had grabbed hold and it was hard to get rid of them. So, yeah. prevented it by, at, at any cost. I <laughs> promise you, you will not regret it. So, for that status that was for that, and nobody did. I'm not. Anyway, <laughs> let me pull it back in. Let me pull it back in. Let me she pull it back in. At all. Let me pull it back in. Let me pull it back in. So, um, I definitely think that that is... <laughs> when you place the value <laughs> on what you have. Um, and even in the sense of him, like Courtney said, you know, we want our ego stroke and we want our self-esteem built. And sometimes, and that has, not all the time, but it comes from our spouse a lot of times because... We want to know that we're desired. Mm-hmm. And that's our duty as husband and wife. We, um, a, a, one of Sister Vicki Roman, she was Hey, Sister Vicki. Hey, Sister Vicki. She gave us this book. And she before she gave us the book, she had told us about um, the importance of pouring into one another. And it's a continuous cycle. And it's like, if I'm empty, I have nothing to pour into my husband. And if he's empty, person. he has nothing to pour into me. So if we both pour into one another, we're continuously full, and we can continuously pour into one another, so we continuously grow together. And that helps us to love our children better. That helps us to run our home better. Yeah. That helps us to just be better and yeah. just to be awesome as you are awesome. awesome as we are. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Okay, so I think that's enough. What do you think? I'm good. I mean, it's just an intro. This is just an intro. This is we um we have a lot and we talk about a lot every day. We have a great conversation in our home. That's that being one thing. said, if you have any topics that you want to see us discuss, scary or not. Listen, we, we, we want to be as real and as transparent as possible, and um, hopefully we'll get it on a platform where we'll be able to get live feedback yes. um, from you all. We will have we, guests. Yeah, we're going to have guests on here. Um, I wonder who the ask your person to They're going to be on here, y'all. Um, <laughs> also, there's a, um, some other married couples that are out there yes. that we're connected to that we definitely want to bring in on this. Um, Absolutely. But we're inviting you all to continue to be a part of this journey that we decided to embark upon. Yeah. Um, I'm excited that we're going to do it in the sixth year um, of our marriage. Um, and we're just excited about what it's going to be. So y'all stay tuned, stay connected. Um, subscribe wherever you can to our podcast. And yes. it's all is fair in love and marriage, not war. Marriage. Because once you grow, it becomes marriage. At first, it may start off like war, <laughs> you know, but it grows. Yeah. What? Um, Anything else you want to say? And we don't want, we have so many people in mind, and my husband, I'm sure, has a lot of people in mind who we want to come um, to just chat with us and to have wonderful dialogue and conversation beyond. Um, marriage and just but we don't want you coming on here if you ain't nothing wrong we good yeah, we perfect uh, we ain't never been hit with nothing we, real, we ain't never we, went through nothing we real stripped down uh-uh. over here Listen, we're transparent we, because how can we help someone else grow if we are not and granted do it in wisdom mm-hmm. 
because we're not airing all dirty laundry right. just out there. We're not doing that. But I don't want to help somebody grow by lying to them right. and saying, you know what? The only way we got through it was 40 days and 40 nights. Water just and bread. <laughs> Water, bread, and hymns. I don't know hymns, okay? <laughs> so that ain't it. But just be real, be honest, because yeah. that's what helps you know the next person grow. Um, you don't know who's going through what. You don't know how long they've been going through it. But help somebody help. I guess nothing, you know, wrong with helping the next person. Yes, the Bible declares that we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our The Jesus. word. See, Bible Wikipedia. It is our duty as believers yes. to, when we go through something and through God overcome those tests, right. tell the testimony, share how we overcame. Um, and again, do it in wisdom. Don't right. don't do it to expose yourself to your own demise. Right. But at the same time, you have to be transparent enough to say that this is not just something that you're going through. Uh, and it's not uncommon. Um, right. it, it's very common for any couple to go through this. Right. Um, and it's overcomable. Yes. It, it doesn't have to be the end for you all. That's a nice word. It's overcomable. Overcomable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. That's that's very true because we can't like we have not gotten to where we were, were to where we are by not being honest mm -hmm. with you know the things that we've been through i always say that you know exposure is like a way to push you to grow you know push you to change um not but saying you know you pull off the covers just bleh, you know because if you come pull off the covers i just play i just play i just play <laughs> the Lord. I just play. I'm just joking, but you don't know what you're gonna get, mm -hmm. and so always allow God to lead you to what you share and how much you share and who you share it to. Yeah. Um. Because some people may want to know, well, how did you make it through this? Right. Just so that they can run and tell. Mm -hmm. Um. Your business, not how you made it through, but that you went through this and who you went it through, who went. You, well, you went through it with me. Yes, thank you, baby. <laughs> um, you know that. But you got to know who you can share it to. God will show you. Who you will. You know. Who definitely will. I mean, I'm sure there's always going to be one person or two people or a bunch of people that talk. But if it's one person that you helped. It's worth it. 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 We've been exposed. Dang. Too many fronts in <laughs> <laughs> our, our downfalls and in our, our weak points. And that's what we're going to talk about next week. We're going to talk about the exposure that just came, like literally. <laughs> out like, of nowhere. Like it out was, of nowhere. It, it was mad old. A couple, <laughs> it was mad ago, old. a couple weeks ago and I was ready. I was gunning oh, and you geez. wasn't. And we're going to talk no, about I, I, but I, But I was ready. Well, wait. I was ready. Properly. I was stuck in the seat. No, just way. <laughs> but no, you're right. We were ready in different ways, and it's fair because it's fair <laughs> in love and <laughs> marriage. That's <laughs> right. We handled it differently, and it's okay. Yes, I was mad at him. I feel like that was unfair. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, we we handled it differently, and we wanted to handle it in two different manners. Um, but that's okay. We're two different individuals. I'm from the gutter. We learn and we grow. Okay. We learn and we grow. And I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful that God gave me a husband. That was cute. That was cute. Y'all heard that? It's the tea. God gave me a that's husband. That's the one for real. <laughs> God gave me, God blessed me with someone who can tell him my ring. So you call me tacky? That's a tack. I know, but am I tacky? It's not even the same like subgroup. I know, but it was like a joke. Mm. Whatever. Mm. All serious <laughs> marriage. 
I'm the funny one, he's the hater. Clearly not. <laughs> but we've been blessed and God has given us this creative idea and this platform yeah. to be able to share, to be able to have great dialogue, mm -hmm. healthy dialogue. Yeah. And like I said, and we said in the beginning, once we push stop and we're done recording, it stays here. Yeah. Um, we don't take any of our disagreements or our different There will be no dissension among us. Right. Oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> we're going to leave it here. We're going to just be able to continue to grow. Yeah. And we pray that someone is blessed. Um, we pray that this sparks dialogue in your home, in your marriage, in your conversations. And it doesn't have to be anybody who's married because, you know, we're individuals, we're people. Mm -hmm. So, we thank you tune in y'all and we'll see like, you next time and share and subscribe all of that all of all that of all of that do see